Good evening, everyone. I'm Sig Gisler. I'm the administrator of the uh, Pulitzer Prizes. I want to welcome you on behalf of the Pulitzer Prize Board and Columbia Journalism School. The Pulitzer Prize is journalism's highest award, and I'm often asked, how do you win one? Well, tonight we're going to shed a little light on that, uh, that question. Tonight we want to find out how journalists won a Pulitzer Prize by digging into a story that was just waiting to be told. We have a terrific panel. On my left is our moderator, Sheila Cornell. She's the director of the J School's uh, Stabile Center for Investigative Journalism and my partner in organizing uh, this seminar. She's an investigative journalist who's known across the world. She began her career in the Philippines in 1982 and made her mark by spotlighting human rights abuses that toppled the Marcos regime. 1989, she co-founded the Philippines Center for Investigative Journalism to promote investigative reporter, uh, reporting and to train journalists. The center became a highly trusted news source in the region, reporting on poverty, corruption, and political intrigue. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, if I did something wrong, I would not want Sheila on my trail. <laughs> in 2006, she joined our faculty and became the inaugural head of the Stabile Center. She's a graduate of the University of the Philippines and the London School of Economics, author or editor of more than a dozen books, and the recipient of numerous awards, including the highest honor that can be paid to a Columbia professor. She received the Presidential Teaching Award in 2011. Next to Sheila, on my left here, is Sally Keston and John Maines. They're representing the Sun Sentinel of South Florida, the winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Public Service. It's the iconic gold medal, which you see depicted on the screen. In winning the prize, they told the story of speeding cops who imperil the community. Sally is an investigative reporter who previously worked at the Tampa Tribune and the Sarasota Herald Tribune. She has led investigations that found children missing from Florida's child welfare agency, uncovered fraud in FEMA disaster aid, and exposed felons working in daycare centers and nursing homes. The FEMA series, by the way, was a 2006 Pulitzer finalist in the investigative reporting category. She's a 1987 graduate of Northwestern University, and she's won a fistful of awards for her work. On uh, Sally's left is John Maines, who's been a database editor at the Sun Sentinel for 15 years. He's an ace analyst. He played a key role in the paper's public service prize on speeding cops. He's a veteran journalist of 36 years in the business. He joined the Sun Sentinel in 1993 as a reporter after working at a variety of papers from Ithaca, New York to Jackson, Mississippi. At the Sun Sentinel, John has worked with reporters on projects that include the 2000 presidential election recount, fraud and waste at FEMA, that Pulitzer Prize finalist I just mentioned, and uh, projects about felons with violent criminal records who granted, were granted, Florida's, uh, by, granted by Florida concealed weapon permits. He also has won numerous local, state, and national awards. Next to Sally and John, we have Elizabeth McGowan and Lisa Song of Inside Climate News. They, along with a colleague, David Hasmeyer, who is not with us tonight, they are the winners of the National Reporting Prize. Working for a small online news organization, they told the story of the Dilbet, Dilbet disaster, the biggest oil spill you never heard of. Elizabeth has evolved from a general assignment and feature reporter at daily newspapers in Wisconsin into an award-winning energy and environment writer who values helping people grasp why these issues are important to their everyday lives. Before joining Inside Climate News in spring 2010, Elizabeth covered national environmental and energy issues in Washington, D.C. as a correspondent for Crane Communications. 
Her work has also appeared in a wide range of publications and won numerous awards. However, she says when the Pulitzer Prize was announced, she double-checked the website to make sure it really happened. <laughs> Lisa Song joined Inside Climate News in 2011, where she reports on oil sands, pipeline safety, and natural gas drilling. At the age of 26, she's one of the youngest Pulitzer Prize winners. Her editor says that when she was sent first sent west from Boston to explore the pipeline issues, they wondered if she was old enough to rent a car. She was. She previously worked as a freelancer. Her articles, podcasts, and videos have appeared in High Country News, Scientific American, and other publications. She has degrees in environmental science and science writing from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And by the way, this Dilbet uh, disaster series also won a uh, other very prestigious awards, including the John B. Oakes Award for Distinguished Environmental Journalism. Next to Lisa is John Branch and Steve Duenas of the New York Times. John won the feature prize, feature writing prize by telling the story of a deadly backcountry avalanche. His storytelling was greatly enhanced by Steve and other multimedia wizards at the New York Times. John joined the New York Times in 2005 as a sports reporter and has made a strong impact. Two years ago, his series on Derek Bugard, a professional hockey player valued for his brawling, shed light on the sports embrace of potentially brain-damaging violence. The series won several awards and was a finalist for the 2011 Pulitzer Prize in feature writing. A native of California, John previously was a sports columnist at the Fresno Bee and worked at the Colorado Springs Gazette as a business reporter and sports reporter. He has a bachelor's degree in business and a master's in journalism, both from the University of Colorado in Boulder. He says the school is better known as the Columbia of the Rockies. Okay. <laughs> Steve uh, is associate managing editor <clears throat> for visualization at the New York Times, which means he helps run the award-winning graphics desk. This group consists of about 30 journalists and designers who research, design, and develop the interactive maps, data visualizations, and motion graphics for the Times' uh, digital platforms and printed newspaper. It's a department in constant motion often responding to breaking news in addition to design work on long-term projects. He's a graduate of Notre Dame, previously worked as a graphics and web designer at the Chicago Tribune. He started at the Times in 1999, became graphics editor in 2004, and then associate managing editor in 2013. He's also been on the faculty of the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Now a word about our format tonight. With interview style questions, Sheila Cornell will guide panelists through their stories, starting with the Sun Sentinel. We'll devote about 20 minutes to each prize. At the end of each segment, Sheila will turn to the audience for about five minutes of questions about that segment only before we move on to the next segment. So please be thinking of questions from the outset. When all three segments are finished, we'll have a general round of questions. Please use the mic in the aisle uh, nearest you to ask questions. We're doing a video and we want to capture uh, all the questions. Anyone tweeting? It is hashtag waiting to be told. And uh, everyone, including our panelists, uh, please speak directly into the, the mics so we get uh, good sound fidelity. And Sheila Cornell, take it away. <laughs> 